So let me talk a little bit about these projects, although I, in fact I don't have a whole lot to demonstrate about them. But the two time pad is very interesting and I got it from this book. This apparently really happened. The Russians used one time pads and when the Germans invaded in World War II, they didn't have enough one-time pads. So the way they made the one-time pads was they'd type it in a typewriter and they'd have carbon paper and make a carbon copy. And they got clearance from the military to make like four carbon copies instead of one to make more copies of the one-time pad so they could get, because they needed to send a lot of messages and they didn't have enough pads. And it turns out that this is the kiss of death. If you use the one-time pad twice, you ruin everything. And that's what this project demonstrates. So I've got the uh, Python code here. All right, so if I, uh, let me see if I'm fitting this in my visible screen. It looks pretty good. All right, so if I uh, clear and then cat OTP1. All right, so what this does, this is the key. Now it really should be random letters, but I'm using a readable sentence which is a minor flaw, but anyway, at least it doesn't repeat ever. So this is the key, and here's the plain text. And remember, the secret of a one-time pad is the plain text has to be shorter than the key. So you encrypt each character in the plain text with a character in the key. And here, all I'm doing is turning the key into a number by just getting the ASCII ordinal number of it and turning the plain text into a number and then XORing them. So that is one way to combine one letter with another to create a different letter. So this will print the encoded stuff in hex. So if I run that, it takes, here's the letters, F and U turns into 13, O and N turns into 1, U and B turns into 17. So here's the um, plain text, 4 score and 7. Here's the key, unbreakable awesome. And here is the ciphertext. That scrambled stuff, if this is all you ever did, that would be essentially impossible to ever crack. Although there are some defects, since I actually used readable text with spaces in it, it's not as good as if those are really random characters like they should have been. But still, this is a very strong encryption. But you can reverse it if you have the key, of course. And that's what OTP2 does. If you have the key, then you can just take the ciphertext turn this back into bytes, and then turn them, uh, the key back into numbers, do the XOR calculation, and then turn it back into characters, and you'll get the plain text. So you can encrypt stuff and decrypt it with a one-time pad pretty easily, four score and seven. And now you just got some flags to find. So the first one, of course, is to just use a known key. So if you have this key, decrypt that ciphertext. That should be trivial. And then you got the whole point, which is the crib drag attack. If you were to encrypt two ciphertexts with the same key, then everything is shot. And the easiest case is where you use, where all both of the plain texts are readable and key is also readable. That makes it easier, although that's not necessary. So here, what you do, you have two encrypted things and you don't know anything. So you just make a guess. Like you guess maybe if you can get any part of it right, so guess that the key starts with D. It's a sentence perhaps starting with D. If that's true, so if you assume the key is D, so what I did was I wrote a, I wrote a program that would let you put in parts of the key and then fill in the rest with just dots. And so D, this turns into Nev and this turns into U, so that looks pretty good. So maybe the key really starts with D. Then the next character is probably a space, so you can guess that and see what happens. Then this NEV might be never, so you can guess what that is. And you guess that. You guess you start with part of it, and then you just guess another letter. One or the other of these will be making a sentence or a word you can guess. So you guess the next letter and see how it works, and guess the next letter. And it turns out to be pretty easy. And in fact, it was originally done without computers. Just like I was saying, you can crack a substitution cipher without a computer. You can crack this even without a computer. You just have to write an algorithm that will do this and let you put in a new guess for the key and let you guess different letters. So I might write one that would let me guess any one of these three. So I could take whichever one I looked pretty good and I could put a letter here and it would show me what the rest was and then let me guess a different one and a different one because these are all three related the same way. 
If you guess message 2, you can use that to calculate the key in message 1 from it. So that's the game. And you'll see this is a crib drag, and here's another crib drag and another crib drag. They're all very easy to solve once you get the idea. And they show that this unbreakable cipher becomes completely useless if you use it twice. I mean, there are the same one-time pad. Yes. Uh, what I mean, yes. Here are two messages encrypted with exactly the same one-time pad. And, um, yep, that's it. That's all that, And that's all you need to know is these two use the same one-time pad. And then you start by guessing something. And by the way, if the appeared in one of the messages, even if the pad was like random numbers, you could still do it by just guessing part of one of the messages. As long as you get any part of it right anywhere, she just, what I did was I started with a letter and put it everywhere and then printed all the results and looked to see this situation where this one's readable and these are also readable. Yeah. We also know the minimum length of the key. Yes, you definitely, you always know the minimum length of the key. Um, that's the nature of it. You always know the key is longer than the longest message. Yep. And the key never repeats. So, you know, the key is just a string. But it turns out you can crack them all, even long ones like this. It won't take you too long. And it's good fun. So that's the two-time pad, which I thought was very good.